greetings and welcome to another episode of Markle Sparkle where we talk all things Meghan Markle and Harry related. So I want to start this episode by saying a huge thank you to all of the lovely peeps in the Sussex Squad universe who showed me so much love and have helped my YouTube channel and Instagram account grow so much in less than a few days. This is such an incredible community and I'm so proud to be part of it and I'm working really hard to create star content and resources for you all. We are all going to rise through the storm, walk in the spirit of excellence, and as Megan said, lead with compassion. I'd also like to say well done to everyone who has donated to the hashtag inspired by Megan fundraiser in honour of Harry and Megan's birthdays. You are doing an incredible thing for girls education. And for those of you who could not donate, do not feel bad at all. These are incredibly trying times and your social media shares and shout outs are also very much appreciated. So thank you for helping to spread awareness. And a huge thank you to Tina and Michelle over at the Sussex Squad podcast for all of the work they do and taking the reins with this project. So today's episode is going to be another lesson of success inspired by Megan. Now I cannot imagine and I don't think any of us can imagine what Megan has gone through being turned into a beating stick for the press and the royal family as they work to distract from far more pressing matters. It is beyond obvious that they are all in this smear campaign together but Megan has kept her head high and keeps it moving and while 99 percent of us will never experience anything to this magnitude, we will without a doubt experience issues with friends, family, colleagues and acquaintances making our life difficult and I think there's a lot we can learn from Megan in regards to how she is handling this situation and how we can apply that to our own lives. So we're going to dissect today the rules of dealing with your haters and coming out on top. Rule number one is keep it classy. Throughout all of this, Megan has shown such incredible class and dignity, even though she has every darn right to be angry, but she has refused to openly engage with her detractors. She knows that jumping in the mud with pigs means getting herself dirty and she's just not going to do that. The present moment may be incredibly painful for her to be living through, but history will not forget how the royal family and press has treated her and it will remember how Meghan took the higher ground regardless of what was thrown at her. The second lesson I think we can learn from Meghan here is to let your work speak for itself and stay focused. Despite all of the drama surrounding her, Meghan has not let it distract from her plan She knows that all of this drama is just designed to knock her down and put hurdles in her path to make her trip, but she has pressed on and pushed even harder, resulting in multiple successes in the short time that she has been in the royal family, something that they resent her for. We had the smart work clothing collection that sold out, the Vogue issue which sent their printing machines into overdrive, the community cookbook which raised money for Grenfell victims, just to name a few things, and I'm sure that there is a lot more behind the scenes that we don't even know about that she worked on but that she had to keep to herself because of the jealousy of the people around her. Also the occasions that she has spoken truth to power it has been interwoven into inspiring and uplifting messages. For example in the Commonwealth webinar that she took part in with Prince Harry and young Commonwealth leaders she spoke about the importance of having uncomfortable conversations about the past and the present and during her girl up speech she reminded women and young girls that those in the seats of power need us more than we need them. I think this is a great tactic because it stays focused on the important issues that we need to be focused on right now without giving her haters the satisfaction of speaking directly to them or giving them any attention which is what they want. The next lesson I think we can learn from Megan is dress to kill. When Megan came back for the farewell tour she bought the fire. We had bright colours, we had capes, she came here, snatched our wigs, ruined our edges and was not sorry about it. She came back fighting and you know often when people talk about fashion it can sometimes be in a very demeaning way that positions fashion as just some kind of frivolous preoccupation of women but fashion has its own language and Megan was speaking volumes through her clothes without ever saying a word and she stole the show. In the words of Coco Chanel, 
dressed like you're going to meet your worst enemy today. We all remember the blue Victoria Beckham dress. She was glistening in the rain with her man, looking like the true king and queen that they are. And even some of her biggest critics had to admit that they were charmed. And there was not a single editor who did not want to use that image. They had no choice. It was the picture of pictures. And it just goes to show that no matter how much they want to put on a front and call her irrelevant, it's Megan who sells, it's Megan who creates conversation. Now it was pretty much expected that she wouldn't be rocking her usual Cali girl vibes type of fashion choices when she joined the royal family because the royal look has its own twang. However, it's obvious that even when following their rules, Meghan was forced to tone it down when she came into the royal family. But when it was time to say, see you later, vipers and alligators, she went full speed ahead and out fashioned everyone. Which brings us to the last point. Do not dim your shine for anyone. You do not have to tone down your talents and excellence to make yourself equal with bottom feeders so that they can feel comfortable in your presence. It's them that need to level up. It's them that needs to put on their Nikes and run faster if they want to keep up with you. People who appreciate strong work ethic and are equally working towards excellence and mastery want others doing the same to be in their presence. Find a tribe of people who think the same way. People who have low standards for themselves will feel threatened by you when you know your worth. It's not just misery that loves company, jealousy and laziness love company too and you do not have to entertain them. In conclusion, if you do all of that, there is not really much your haters can do. They will continue to spew venom and eventually either exhaust themselves or drown in a pool of their own poison. Meanwhile, you would have been laser focused on your goals and come out the other side more successful than they had anticipated. I hope you will find that useful. That is all for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this video if you think someone else will find it useful. Let me know in the comment section how you have dealt with haters in your life and keep sparkling my lovelies. I will see you in the next episode.